She was preceded by a considerable weight of expectation. At Southampton, the White Star Line had already constructed the massive deep water ocean dock, covering almost 16 acres and dredged to a depth of 40 feet. England's premier passenger port was flourishing, with new shops, restaurants, and businesses opening to service the growing passenger trade. And job opportunities on board ship and in the docks brought migrants from all over Britain and Ireland. Almost 400 of Titanic's crew lived in Southampton's northern district. A national coal strike had left several ships laid up in dock, and the prospect of a job on Titanic was a welcome relief for crewmen who managed to sign up. On April 5th, Titanic was dressed in her signal flags and pennants as a Good Friday tribute to the people of Southampton who had welcomed her. By April 10th, the ship had been fully provisioned, including 75,000 pounds of fresh meat, 40,000 eggs, 1,000 sweetbreads, and 8,000 cigars. At 7 a.m., Captain Edward John Smith came aboard the Titanic to prepare for the Board of Trade muster at 8. Around 9.30, the first passengers arrived on the boat train from London Waterloo. By late morning, all the passengers and crew were aboard, minus two firemen who were delayed in a public house and missed the departure. At noon on April 10th, bang on time, and fully expecting to be in New York within a few days, the Titanic sounded her whistle and cast off her lines. Titanic's launch in May 1911 was watched by an estimated 100,000 people. Almost a year of fitting out followed, transforming the massive hull into the sumptuously appointed liner described by the White Star Line as a queen of the ocean. By March 1912, Titanic was ready for her maiden voyage. For Belfast, the triumphant culmination of many years planning and labor. Before she could be handed over, Titanic had to undergo sea trials. On the 2nd of April 1912, she carried out a series of maneuvers in open water under the watchful eye of Board of Trade Inspector Francis Carruthers. Then, at 8 p.m. that evening, she departed Belfast for Southampton. She was preceded by a